Take us into that refugee camp. Uh, you, you've been to Africa. You've reported on famine. You've reported on tragedy before. But on a personal level, how did this one hit you? Um, well, it was worse than, than we expected. And of course, when you're dealing with children, it, it's always going to hit um, home a lot deeper. And as it turned out, in the end, some of the, the children we were meeting, it was really um, their last moments on, on this planet. And so, of course, um, that's going to going to impact you and you're very conscious of needing to deal with their memory correctly and and of trying not to to make those final moments for them worse um, so uh, yeah difficult but of course that's what we're there to do yeah and you are doing your, your job there as you as you look around you and you see that you're surrounded by this tragedy in that moment what do you feel is your responsibility well, I think um, the responsibility is, in, in the first instance, is just to get there. You know, um, you can't make people care if you don't go there. You can't make people understand, you know, on a much deeper level if you're just rewriting somebody else's wire copy. So that's the first responsibility is to get out the door and to get there, which means, you know, um, having a discussion, an editorial discussion about why how you do it. South Sudan is a difficult country for journalists to operate in. Um, <clears throat> they're not particularly welcome. It's getting harder and harder to get visas there. Um, even aid agencies are having trouble operating there. So getting there is half the battle. And when you do, you know, it's not difficult. It's very easy for me to say to you, I stood before a man who had his dying child in his arms and, you know, the arms of that father were so skinny, it looked like he couldn't even hold up that child. The minute I say that to you, I hope, um, you know, it travels across the miles. And, of course, the picture, uh, as they say, speaks louder than words. But, of course, you, you're, you're a journalist. You're not an advocate. Uh, you're just there doing your job and reporting the facts to the Canadian public and sending that around the world. Um, and you're not there to ask people to do something. But I can only imagine, as you see those images, that, like the ones you've just described, what do you hope the reaction will be, both from the Canadian government and from the Canadian people? Well, I think that, I mean, obviously, as, our, our, as journalists, our job is to help people understand and make up their own mind about how um, best to help a situation, whether or not to get involved, whether or not they think Canada should be involved or people want to make... Uh, individual responsibility or take individual responsibility or act. So you hope that you can kind of clear away the weeds, make people understand what the war is about, why it's still happening, what international players are doing on the stage to, to actually stop the war. Because when we hear famine, we tend to think about drought, you know, in sort of in the biblical way. Um, this, of course, is a man-made famine. This is a country that is uh, Africa's newest nation. It's uh, just about to be six years old. It didn't last more than three years before it descended into civil war. And that is what is driving the famine, you know, on top of the difficult climatic uh, conditions, on top of uh, just the distance and the lack of development in the country and the lack of good governance. So um, by presenting that picture, hopefully you give people, you know, the tools they need to, to kind of impact their MPs or governments, you know, if that's what they want to do. Well, the pictures are moving and the stories are incredible. Margaret, great work, and thank you for talking to us. Thank you for having me.